Very good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to what is hopefully our last ever COVID-19 uh, regulations webinar. This is phase five in Chicago. Uh, my name is Isaac Reichman. I'm the director of public information at the City of Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. I know for many of you, this is not your first webinar, but if it is, uh, I need to go over this every time. First, this webinar is being recorded. It's going to be posted on our YouTube page um, uh, after the webinar is completed. That's at youtube.com slash Chicago BACP. Just type that um, into the chat. Again, that's youtube.com slash Chicago BACP. Additionally, a big portion of today's webinar will be answering questions. You can uh, submit those questions uh, to the chat and typing into the chat right now. Again, you can submit, excuse me, you can submit your questions to the chat. You can also email them if you do not uh, get an answer during this webinar to BACP outreach at cityofchicago.org. Again, that's BACP outreach at cityofchicago.org. You can find that in the bottom of every page uh, over the course of this webinar. Again, today's webinar is all about phase five in Chicago. This is, again, as I said, hopefully the last webinar that we're holding on COVID-19 regulations, because as, as you all know, we announced just on Friday that we are now in phase five, which means we are fully reopened. Now there's a couple obviously important nuances there that we're going to go over over the course of this webinar. But for the most part, this means no social distancing, no capacity limits, and uh, lifting of other COVID-19 restrictions. And this is great news. Uh, you know, our COVID rates are at the lowest they've ever been. We know it's been a really, really challenging 450 uh, days, a little over 450 days. We know there's been so, so many changes. In fact, I believe today is our 50th reopening webinar since we started reopening um, actually around this time, around the end of May uh, last year. So uh, again, today is all about phase five in Chicago. It's gonna be shorter than most of the other webinars we've had because again, for the most part, uh, COVID-19 rules have been lifted. So first, as always, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the uh, latest on COVID metrics, even though you know, we are fully reopened and we're at kind of the tail end of this pandemic. We are still tracking. Um, we are still tracking all of the COVID metrics. And even if we're not, you know, in the, the worst of the pandemic, COVID-19 is still among us. We are not, as you can see here, fully in controlled transmission. All four of our main, all four of our reopening numbers are at least in the lower risk, if not in controlled transmission. We have fewer cases, lower positivity rate, fewer emergency department visits, and fewer ICU beds occupied by COVID patients. But as you can see here, none of these numbers are zero. They're low, they're in controlled transmission, they've been declining steadily, and enough people are vaccinated for us to be able to move to phase five. But as you can see here, they are not at zero. COVID-19 is still among us. So. While we are lifting regulations, we are very excited again to be in phase five. We do need to still recognize that this is something that is among us and we still need to um, you know, act accordingly. So what exactly does phase five mean? As you know, effective on Friday, June 11th, this past Friday, businesses can operate without most COVID-19 restrictions. This means there are no more capacity limits. There are no more social distancing requirements. So no more six feet between tables, no more 75% capacity, no more maximum capacity within venues. Um, obviously, provided that you're not going over the capacity for your venue as a whole. Um, mask mandates for most businesses are, not, um, are no longer in place. Additionally, restrictions on certain business activities that had to be closed or modified, such as saunas, indoor playgrounds, self-serve food, places like that, ordering at the bar, any sort of restriction on specific business activities are lifted. Those are no 
longer um, requirement now that we're in phase five. And then other COVID requirements, such as, you know, again, um, requiring uh, bars to have a food partner in order to operate or um, anything, anything really across the board, any other different type of COVID-19 restriction is no longer in place. I'm going to talk about masks in a little bit more detail on the next few slides, because I think there's a lot of nuance and a lot of recommendations there. But again, there is no official mask mandate at most businesses. Businesses, though, are encouraged to facilitate and, and um, ensure social distancing, especially for unvaccinated customers to the extent possible. So there's no formal social distancing requirement, but Again, COVID is still here. We're still encouraging businesses, especially if people are unvaccinated, if you can't um, ensure that they're vaccinated, to still facilitate social distancing to the extent possible. It's not a formal requirement, but that is something that, that we are encouraging. Finally, current hour limits, and I'll talk about this um, in just a couple slides, will remain in place until the statewide public health order is lifted on June 26th. We're still subject to an emergency, um, excuse me, <clears throat> an emergency health order that uh, covers the entire state. Until that is lifted on June 26th, our current hour limits will remain in place. This means two things. This means that <clears throat> packaged goods sales from liquor stores and other businesses still must end at 11 p.m. <clears throat> and it means that um, businesses that have a late hour license need to be vaccine only during their late night operations. And again, I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. But other than the hour limits and other than a couple different mask things I'm gonna talk about in just one slide, all other COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. And those hour limits, um, will th those hour limits will uh, remain in place only until June 26th. So, a little bit more about masks. There are a couple places in alignment with the CDC and with the state of Illinois where masks are still required for everyone indoors. This includes schools, congregate settings, um, like such as correctional facilities and shelters, public transportation, which includes taxis, liveries, and ride hail, um, city of Chicago buildings for now, and healthcare settings. So. Um, an important thing, you know, if you are on the CTA, if you're in a taxi or an Uber or a Lyft, you do still need to wear a mask. Everybody, whether or not you are vaccinated. Additionally, we still recommend that unvaccinated people wear masks in indoor locations where they cannot social distance. Um, this is, again, in alignment with the state and with the CDC. Therefore, businesses are encouraged to post signage saying that unvaccinated people should wear face coverings. Businesses are not required to verify that someone is vaccinated to have them wear face coverings. Um, they're encouraged though at least to post signage um, saying that face coverings are required for unvaccinated people. Um, businesses can still require face coverings for all customers. Um, we know that many businesses will continue to do this. Um, we absolutely support any business that continues to require face coverings for all their customers. Um, they're encouraged uh, if they are requiring face coverings to use signage such as this to notify customers of their mask policy prior to entry. Additionally, on kind of the other side of that coin, businesses should support customers and employees that choose to wear a mask, even if it is not required. Businesses should not be telling people to take their masks off if they want to wear a mask, especially um, as it relates to their employees. Great. Um, so I'm going to take a minute to answer some questions as it relates to masks. Again, there is no mask mandate, you know, for businesses. So for what this means for the city, so a question in here, masks are still required in schools. What about after school programs like dance, karate classes for kids under the age of 12? So again, unvaccinated people should be wearing masks. This is not something, you know, that the city is 
Um, the, you know, as I said, there is no longer a mask mandate that is in um, uh, enforceable by the city of Chicago, but unvaccinated people should still be wearing masks. Um, and after school, uh, so after school programs where kids are under under age 12 or under, you know, they should be wearing masks to the extent that they cannot social distance. Um, Question about the new mask guidance applying to offices. So again, um, masks are, uh, let me just, uh, so these are the only locations where masks are required at this point. And again, this is in alignment with the state and with the CDC. So, you know, offices, whether they're open to the public or not, masks are not required. Businesses can choose to require masks. You know, the city is no longer enforcing any sort of, of mask requirement, yeah, except for uh, the locations, as you say, listed here. Um, so question by that, what if, um, how can you enforce mask wearing when the city um, no longer requires it? So will state agencies like DCFS also acknowledge these changes? You know, I do understand that the state has, um, the state has updated all of their regulations, especially as it relates to, to healthcare and childcare. Um, you know, this is, again, it's not something that uh, the city is enforcing, but um, we, you know, businesses can still uh, require stronger mask requirements. Again, please use the chat if you have any questions and I'll work to answer those um, as soon as possible. Um, as always, uh, these, um, the, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So if anybody wants, um, access to this information, it'll be posted on our YouTube page. Additionally, all of the information that you can find, uh, that you find on this, uh, webinar can be found at our reopening website. That's chicago.gov slash reopening. Um, in addition to masks, wanted to remind, uh, to kind of go into a little bit more detail on the new hour on the sorry not on the hour limitations that are remaining in effect so again excuse me just until saturday june 26th so just for less than two more weeks the current hour limits will remain in place and those hour limits are as a reminder as follows um and i apologize this should say let me fix this real quick this should say 11 p.m not 12 a.m um sorry about that Right. So alcohol sales from businesses with a package goods license remain prohibited after 11 p.m. So, again, our sales currently um, liquor stores, other businesses like that um, limited to selling uh, cannot sell alcohol after 11 p.m. That remains in effect um, until Saturday, June 26. Additionally, businesses that have a late hour liquor license can only operate during those late at night hours if everyone is fully vaccinated. That means from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. on Monday through Saturday mornings and 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. That time um, is limited to vaccinated only customers. Um, so question, uh, if anybody has any questions on this, the intention of this is, as I said, we're still in a statewide um, public health emergency. So the intention of this was just to ensure, especially as it relates to these late night um, locations, you know, we know that these are, uh, you know, establishments where uh, social distancing is, is non-existent and, and certainly challenging. Wanted to ensure that, you know, these kind of still, COVID is still among us, these high risk areas that they do remain um, uh, vaccine only for just the next couple of weeks. And so we're fully out of the statewide uh, public health emergency. Great. So um, again, today is a pretty short presentation um, because, as I said, the vast majority of regulations have been lifted. I'm happy to, you know, I'm going to answer questions. I see additional questions come in. Does this mean that there are no more temperature checking requirements as well, regardless of activity? Yes, that is correct. There is no more temperature checking requirements. You know, that's something that obviously we support. It is definitely best practices to ensure that people aren't sick. 
um, but it is uh, not a requirement at this point. I have a question for the exact signage. Those, if you go to chicago.gov slash reopening, and I'll type that in again, again, chicago.gov slash reopening. Um, if you click on, there's a communication resources tile there, um, and it has these exact signage, they're downloadable and, and you can use those. Great. Questions, are there any updates on indoor arenas and concerts? You know, indoor arenas and concerts can operate fully at this point. There's no COVID-19 uh, regulations. Additionally, water fountains, again, can, can absolutely uh, be reopened. Um, the city passed two anti-retaliation ordinances. Will they still be enforced? Absolutely. So a little bit about those two anti-retaliation ordinances. Um, the, the first anti-retaliation ordinance says, said that an employee cannot retaliate against you if you are staying home with COVID-19 symptoms um, or to follow any sort of health order. So that is still in effect and that is still enforceable. Additionally, the second anti-retaliation ordinance says that an employee cannot, employer cannot retaliate against the worker for, um, cannot retaliate against a worker if they take time off to go get the COVID-19 vaccine. That is still in effect as well. Um, obviously, folks know COVID-19 vaccine is widely available. The, the real reason, the only reason why we're here and able to, to be at this point is that the vaccine works. You know, you can tell, uh, you know, we've never had numbers this low, despite being pretty close to reopen over the last few months. So, you know, we want to make sure that all of your employees are able to go get the COVID-19 vaccine without fear of losing their job or being uh, disciplined against um, in any way. Um, so, yeah, those are still absolutely enforced. Um, for questions here, for event venues, are we required to gather vaccine records for guests? Again, there is no formal requirement. You know, certainly, um, if you want to keep vaccine records, to ensure that people are vaccine, um, and that that is something that that can be done, but it's not a requirement. Uh, questions about social distancing at office spaces? Again, all social distancing requirements have been lifted. All capacity limits have been lifted. All requirements for temperature checks, symptom checks, checking vaccine records, all of those requirements are lifted really across industries. Um, okay. Had questions here about our restaurants have had requests for BACP investigations, including social distancing and education compliance. So I believe that this question is a reference to our um, active compliance program. Um, which we use to proactively visit businesses uh, and and walk them through both COVID regulations in the past and other rules. You know, our active compliance program is still we still uh, use that program because you know we enforce a lot of not COVID nineteen um, re regulations, so we're still absolutely doing that. You know, again, there aren't COVID nineteen um, capacity and social distancing recommendations. But we are still doing active compliance program. Um, if so, if that had already been organized, that is something that's still happening. Um, you know, we are, co you know, COVID nineteen enforcement. You know, we're no longer doing COVID nineteen enforcement, but we still obviously businesses have a lot of other regulations um, that they are to be following, um, and you know. Um, that is something that you know BACP is still going to be enforcing all of the other regulations as it relates to your businesses. Um, if you any sort of uh, any sort of complaints that you have related to the anti-retaliation ordinance or anything else, those can always be submitted to 311 either by calling 311 directly or through the 311 app. Um, great. Is a travel quarantine system still in effect at this point? The 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 city's travel order is still in effect. However, because every single state around the country is doing great in the fight against COVID, um, they um, there is no state that is currently on the quarantine list. So no state is uh, um, you, there's no state that that falls into that order at this point. 
Can a business serving children be reported if kids don't wear masks for class? Um, for let me again, I said this a couple times. I'll say it again. You know, there aren't COVID nineteen. Uh, you know, we are not. BCP is not out there actively enforcing COVID nineteen regulations at this point, unless you know we're talking about these places again where masks are still formally required. So you know, we strongly encourage if you have people who are unvaccinated. We strongly encourage that they're wearing masks, whether they're kids or adults, but it is not a formal requirement outside of these settings where everybody is required to be wearing masks. So um, if you choose to make an event vaccinated only, do you need to collect guest information? No, that is not a requirement, you know, um, except again, the only requirement we have in place as it relates to vaccinated only, and again, this is only in effect for 12 more days until June 26th, um, is that these late night places are vaccinated only during those late night hours. So they are uh, required to be checking vaccine cards, photocopies of cards, pictures of cards, something like that. Um, no, and no other establishment is required to check vaccine cards in order to operate. A uh, question about Park District, when will they be fully open? That's a great question. If you send that question via email, um, again, BACPoutreach at cityofchicago.org, BACPoutreach at cityofchicago.org. I'll check with my colleagues over at the Park District to see when they're planning on opening. Uh, is a safety plan still required for retail stores? Again, you do not need to have any sort of COVID-19 plan. If you have any other questions as it relates to your general regulations that you always need to follow even in non-COVID times, um, you can send us an email and I'll check with my colleagues in our enforcement um, division here. Great. What is the city's guidance on employee symptom checks? You know, um, really the, the recommendation uh, for employee symptom checks has not changed. Nobody should be reporting to work at any work if they have COVID-19 symptoms. That, that truly has not changed. So at minimum, you really should be having people do symptom checks. No one should be coming to work with COVID symptoms because again, COVID is not gone. Now, again, there is no formal requirement. There is nothing enforceable that the city has as it relates to symptom checks. You know, but if businesses still want to do temperature checks, still want to fill out any sort of questionnaire, anything like that, absolutely support that. Again, people should not be coming to work if they have COVID-19 symptoms. Great. Again, I'll stick around for a little bit if anyone has any additional um, questions. Um, happy to stick around and answer those. Again, uh, please feel free to send us an email. Um, in uh, again, BACP outreach at cityofchicago.org. Um, questions here as it relates to vaccine exemptions and uh, bridge face capacity. Again, across the board, capacity limits have been lifted. There are no COVID-19 capacity limits, whether you're checking vaccine cards or not. COVID-19 capacity limits have been list lifted. And um, if you have a specific question on whether you count as healthcare or not, please feel, please send us an email um, and I'll track that down. I, I wanna check with our health department so I do want to make sure that uh, I'm not giving you incorrect information quickly. So if you have any questions, please email those to BACP Outreach about whether your specific establishment counts as healthcare or not. Again, please send us that, that question via email. <clears throat> question, do workplaces with customers need COVID-19 releases? Um, no, workplaces with customers do not need COVID-19. Releases, you know, uh, we again uh, support businesses that decide to be stricter, but there is no uh, no requirement. Again, if you have any email, BACP outreach at cityofchicago.org. This video will be posted to our YouTube page. Again, I, I do really hope that this is the last uh, COVID 19 regulation webinar. It's our 50th and over the past year, so I think it's a nice round number to end with. But I do want to be clear, you know, we are. Uh, in a really good place as it stands right now, 
but we do still, you know, we're not at our vaccine goals. We're not at our full um, vaccinated goals um, yet at this point. And there is certainly some concerns that come this fall or winter, uh, we may see an increase. So the best way to make sure that that is the case um, is to uh, get vaccinated. Get your cust get your employees vaccinated. Uh, we know it works. We wouldn't be here today if it didn't work. Absolutely. So again, I see a couple kind of specific questions come in. Um, please do uh, send me an email, um, and I'll try to track down some of those specific questions, and I'll um, work to get you answers as quickly as possible. Again. BACP outreach at cityofchicago.org. Thank you, everyone.